Hello. In a previous video, I introduced the joint probability mass function for pairs of discrete random variables. In this video, I will introduce the joint probability density function for pairs of continuous random variables. In that previous video, I started by noting that we can introduce a joint cumulative probability distribution function that tells us the probability that the random variable capital X is less than or equal to small x and the random variable capital Y is less than or equal to small y. Analogously, this was analogous to the way that we introduced the cumulative probability distribution function for a single random variable. In previous weeks, you have seen how the cumulative probability density function is equal to the derivative of the cumulative probability distribution function. By extension, you have also seen that we can recover the cumulative distribution from the probability density by computing an integral. By a similar token then, the joint probability density function is defined to be a function from which we can calculate the cumulative probability distribution function by finding the double integral shown here. The joint probability mass function was best illustrated by putting its various elements in a table. By a similar measure, the joint probability density function is best illustrated by drawing a two-dimensional contour plot as shown here. In this figure, the various values of the random variable capital X are shown on the x-axis, and the various values of the random variable capital Y are shown on the y-axis. The colour is then used to display the value of the probability density function, or, in the case of the particular graph shown here, the value of the negative logarithm of the probability density function. Displaying the logarithm of the probability density on plots such as this one, rather than the probability density itself, is commonplace as the probability density will often vary over multiple orders of magnitude. Just as we could calculate a marginal distribution from a joint probability mass function and thus recover the probability mass functions for the individual variables, we can calculate marginals from the joint probability density function and thus recover the probability density functions for the individual variables. To calculate these marginals, we use the expression shown at the top of this slide. The integral on the right-hand side of this equation is equal to the probability density function for the random variable capital X, which is obviously the first derivative of the cumulative probability distribution function for this random variable with respect to X. The figure at the top of the slide shows the negative logarithm of the marginal distribution for the random variable capital X. As with the joint probability mass function, the visual representation of the function of the joint distribution fun density function gives us an appealing way of visualizing what we are doing when we calculate these marginal distributions. In this case, we compute the marginal for capital X by integrating over the y-axis. This is why we can no longer see the two modes of the distribution uh, when we plot the marginal. There is a big difference between the y values of the centres of the two modes and only a small difference in the x values of the centres of the modes. When we integrate out y, the two modes thus get squeezed into a single mode. If by contrast we integrate out x, we can see the two modes in the resulting marginal as shown here. To summarise then, we have introduced the joint probability density function for a pair of continuous random variables and we have discussed how the marginal distributions can be computed by taking integrals. For discrete random variables, we saw that the marginals were calculated by taking sums rather than integrals. In addition, for discrete random variables, I also explained how quantities such as the expectations, covariances and so on could be computed by taking sums. Much like the marginal distributions, in calculating these quantities for continuous random variables, you simply replace the sums by integrals. The exercises contain examples that show you how this is done in practice. You will then have the opportunity in the exercises to complete these quantities by hand 
and using a computer algebra package. Good luck with those exercises, ask for help if you need it, and once again, thanks for your attention.